Hi everybody. I shall get soft drinks for all of you. Bobby, can I have some ice? Sorry, Gobby failed to pull ice tray out of refrigerator. Call to Maya and Bayu for help. Maya, Bayu. Yes, kids. What's your wish? We needed the ice from the refrigerator. That's all. So here is the ice. Kids, do you know how ice is formed? Yes, ice is made up of water. Correct. How can we find out? Let's see how. To determine three different states of water. Requirements: two ice cubes, zip top, sandwich bag, microwave, safe dish, microwave oven. Procedure: put the ice cubes in the sandwich bag. and then seal it place the bag on a microwave safe dish and set it in the microwave turn the microwave on at full power for 1 minute and watch as the ice cubes melt and become liquid you may have to run it for an additional 30 seconds to melt all the ice Now run the microwave for another 30 seconds. What happens to the bag? Let the bag cool completely before removing it from the microwave. Conclusion All matter is made up of tiny units called molecules. Matter can take three different forms: solid, liquid, or gas. When a substance is in its solid state the molecules are slow moving and packed closely together ice is the solid state of water in this experiment you add energy by heating the ice in the microwave the molecules begin to move faster and further apart until the water reaches a liquid state when you continue to heat the liquid The molecules move even faster and further apart to become water vapor which is a gas. The expanding water vapor causes the bag to pop up. A Now let's study some properties of matter. requirements two cups uncooked rice quart jar with liquid large marble or ping pong ball 
procedure. Place the marble or ping pong ball on top of the rice. Fasten the lid onto the jar and then turn the jar over. Using one hand, shake the jar hard from side to side. The marble or ball will rise to the surface. Conclusion The rice may fill part of the jar, but something else is between each grain. Empty space. When you shake the jar, the rice grains tumble over each other, filling in the empty spaces. The marble or ball is too big to fill in any of these spaces, so it moves upward. This experiment demonstrates a property of matter. No two objects can occupy the same place at the same time. In. Kids, have you ever taken a sip of soda and felt tickle at the end of your nose? Yes, I have. That's caused by tiny bubbles of carbon dioxide, a gas which gives soda its fizz. Requirements Glass paint jar Unopened bottle of club soda 10 raisins Procedure Fill the jar with club soda. Add the raisins one at a time to the club soda and watch what happens. The raisins will rise, then fall, then eventually rise again. Conclusion Club soda fizzes because it is filled with carbon dioxide gas. The gas bubbles rise because they are lighter than the liquid they are in. In this experiment, the bubbles cling to the raisins and carry them to the surface. The bubbles break, the raisins sink, until new bubbles attach to the raisin and carry them up again. In I can make a coin jump without touching it. Isn't it magic? Requirements 2 liter soda bottle with no cap Freezer Quarter water Procedure Put the empty, open soda bottle in the freezer for about 10 minutes. Dip that quarter in water. Take the bottle out of the freezer and set it on a flat surface in a sunny spot. Quickly cover the open mouth of the bottle with the wet coin. The coin will soon start to tap up and down. As long as the coin is centered over the opening of the bottle, the tapping will continue. Conclusion It is due to the effect of gas expansion. Kids, we can make matter disappear right before your eyes. Requirements 1 fourth cups water at room temperature. Glass paint jar. Marking pen. Masking tape. Spoon. 1 fourth cup sugar. Procedure Pour 1 fourth cup water into the jar. Draw a line to mark the water level and label it one fourth. If your pen won't work on glass, write on a piece of masking tape and put it on the jar at the right water level. Add another one fourth cup water and mark it half. Add one more one fourth cup water and label it three fourth. Empty the contents of the jar into the sink. Refill the jar with water to the cup mark.
with a spoon. Stir one fourth cup sugar into the water and check the level of the fluid. Do half cup water and one fourth cup sugar equal three fourth cup water. Conclusion. It's an example of a solution. In polyethylene, which is a type of plastic made from polymers, has a unique property. It shrinks when ripped. Requirements: zip top sandwich bag, water, sharpened pencil. Procedure: fill the plastic bag with water. And seal it. Hold the bag in front of you as quickly as you can. Stab the pencil through one side of the bag and out the other. Conclusion: Some types of molecules form long chains called polymers. Some polymers are found in natural substances such as rubber and starch. whereas others are in manufactured goods such as most plastics polyethylene which is a type of plastic made from polymers has a unique property it shrinks when ripped or when a hole is stabbed in it when you stab the pencil through the plastic bag it tightens around the pencil to seal the hole In. To demonstrate the diffusion of molecules. Requirements: pint jar, water, red food coloring. Procedure: fill the jar almost to the top with water. Set the jar on a flat surface and add. 10 drops of red food coloring without disturbing the jar note what happens during the next 15 minutes the coloring will slowly swirl and spread all by itself conclusion molecules in any state of matter are always moving molecules move fast in liquids than they do in solids and they move even faster in gases in this experiment you can't see the molecules but you can see what happens when food coloring molecules are struck by water molecules the process by which solids liquids or gases mix together is called diffusion because of diffusion the food coloring spreads through the water on its own turning the liquid bright red in to determine the suspension of polymers requirements 4 ounce bottle of white glue 1 and 1/2 cups distilled water two medium glass bowls two spoons one teaspoon borax powder procedure mix the entire bottle of glue and half cup distilled water in one bowl stir with a spoon pour one cup distilled water and one teaspoon borax powder into the second bowl stir well with the second spoon pour the glue mixture into the borax mixture and stir until you have a thick blob lift the mixture and knead it with your hands until it feels like dough try ripping it pulling it apart slowly conclusion the white glue is made up of polymers 
that becomes suspended in water. Before you mix the glue with anything else, these polymers tend to slide over each other. Adding borax to the glue causes the polymers to stop moving and form a sort of meshwork instead. The result is a concentrated suspension. Liquid water with lots of tiny solid particles. In this case, they are polymers suspended in it. The solid particles do not fit into the spaces between the water molecules, so they can't dissolve in the liquid. Kobe, would you like to make your hands messy? Yes, why are you? Let's see what a non-Newtonian fluid is. In. To demonstrate properties of non-Newtonian fluid. Requirements. Cornstarch, small bowl, water, spoon. Procedure. Put one fourth cup cornstarch in the bowl. Add six teaspoons water, then stir. If it is too hard to stir, add a little more water. If the mixture gets too watery, add more cornstarch. The mixture should be fluid but very hard to mix. It should feel like thick mud. When you think that you have the right consistency, Scoop out a handful and quickly roll it back and forth between the palms of your hands. It will become firm. Stop rolling and hold the mixture in your hand over the bowl. The goo will drip from your fingers. When you are finished with the experiment, let the mixture become firm. Then put it in the trash. Do not throw it down the sink as it can clog the drain. Conclusion the mixture you created is a non-Newtonian fluid. Fluids have a property called viscosity or resistance to flow. Something with high viscosity, like honey, flows slowly. Something with low viscosity, like water, flows quickly. The scientist Sir Isaac Newton found that the viscosity of a fluid can be changed only by rising or lowering its temperature. Non-Newtonian fluids are an exception to that rule. The viscosity of these fluids can be changed by altering the temperature or by applying a force. In this experiment, you apply a force to the fluid by rubbing it between your hands. Hey kids, do you know that an ink is made up of different pigments? A black line is not always a black line. In. To demonstrate the capillary action. Requirements. Scissors, coffee filter, water soluble marking pen, water, glass quart jar, string, tape. Procedure Cut a strip from the coffee filter that is 1 inch wide and almost as tall as the jar. About 2 inches from one end of the strip, make a large dot with the marking pen. Pour an inch of water into the jar. Cut a piece of string, place it across the top of the open jar and tape the ends to the jar. This will be the hanger for the filter strip. Place the filter strip inside the jar with the dot at the bottom end. The end of the paper should be in the water, but the dot should be about an inch above the water level. Tape the top of the strip to the string to hold it in place and watch what happens. 
conclusion? The water seeps up the paper through a process called capillary action. Water molecules move into the spaces between the fibers in the paper, then attract other water molecules to form. As the water travels upward, it carries the ink along with it. The ink is made up of more than one color or pigment. The colors slowly separate, allowing you to see the individual pigments that make up the ink. The weight of the chemicals used to produce the ink affects how far each pigment seeps up the water. The lighter chemicals travel farthest. Aim. To determine acid base reaction, requirements spoon, half cup water, half cup vinegar, half cup dish washing liquid, two glass pint jars, half cup baking soda, medium size mixing bowl. Procedure Stir the water, vinegar, and dishwashing liquid together in one jar. Put the baking soda in the other jar. Place that jar in the bowl to catch any spillover. Pour the contents of the first jar into the second jar. Stir quickly and watch. Conclusion Baking soda is a base. Vinegar is an acid. When a base and an acid are combined, they create a chemical reaction. In a chemical reaction, molecules interact to create new molecules. Together, the baking soda and vinegar produce carbon dioxide gas. Aim to determine immiscibility of liquids. Requirements Water Empty soda bottle with cap from which the label has been removed and you can use 1 liter or 2 liter bottle size. Blue food coloring Bottle of baby oil Procedure Pour water into the soda bottle until it is about three quarters full. Add five to ten drops of blue food coloring to the water and screw the cap on. Shake to mix. Unscrew the cap. Fill the bottle to the rim with baby oil. And screw the cap on. Hold the bottle on its side and gently tip it up and down. The colored water will look like the waves of the ocean. Conclusion This experiment is a demonstration of immiscible liquids. Those liquids that are different from each other and will not mix together. As long as you move the bottle gently, the water and baby will stay separated. Do you know why some things float while others sink? Find out for yourself with this experiment about density. Aim To find the density of a substance Requirements Rubbing alcohol, glass pine jar, half cup water, 2 tablespoon cooking oil, empty 35 mm canister or small plastic container, food coloring, you can take any color and an eyedropper. Procedure Pour the alcohol into the jar, then add the water. The water will sink to the bottom of the jar. Pour the cooking oil into the canister 
or small container. Add 5 drops of food coloring. Put the cap on. Then shake hard to mix the oil and food coloring. Using an eyedropper, gently place drops of the oil mixture into the jar of water and alcohol. If the drops sink, add more water to the jar, one tablespoon at a time, until they are suspended about midway in the fluid. Conclusion The density of an object or substance is the amount it weighs in relation to the amount of space it takes up. Water, alcohol and oil have different densities. In this experiment, the water sinks below the alcohol because it is heavier. The drops of oil also sink through the alcohol but float on the water because oil is heavier than alcohol and lighter than water. You may notice that the color slowly seeps out of the oil until the drops are clear. Oil and food coloring are immiscible liquids or liquids that won't really mix together. They appear to be mixed when you shake the canister, but they eventually separate. Where does the color go? It spreads through the water. In. Now let's compare the density of salt water and fresh water. Requirements 2 empty 2 litre soda bottles with no caps. Water at room temperature. 6 teaspoons salt. Red food colouring. 3 by 5 inch card. Duct tape. Procedure Fill both bottles with water. Add the salt. And 10 drops of red food coloring to the first bottle only. Cover the top with your hand. Then shake the bottle to mix the content. Place the 3 by 5 inch card over the top of the first bottle. Hold the cap in place with one hand and flip the bottle over. 4. You may need help with this step. Balance the opening of the first bottle directly over the opening of the second bottle. Wrap duct tape around the necks of the bottle to prevent leaks. Watch the bottles carefully. What happens to the colored water? Conclusion The volume or amount of water in each bottle is the same. If the density of water in each bottle was also the same, for instance, if the water in both bottles was room temperature fresh water, then all the water would weigh the same and it would not shift around. In this experiment, you use fresh water and salt water. Salt water is more dense than fresh water because of the salt. Therefore, it is also heavier. The colored salt water sinks to the bottom. In. Saisha, do you know that the density of air varies with temperature? Let's try an experiment. Requirements 7 ice cubes 1 teaspoon salt Zip top sandwich bag 2 pencils Which are sharpened Empty oatmeal box Lid removed Outdoor thermometer And tape Procedure Put the 
ice cubes and salt in the sandwich bag. Then seal the bag. Use one pencil to make a thermometer size hole in the side of the oatmeal box about half inch from the bottom. Insert the thermometer about halfway in. Note the temperature. Set both pencils side by side across the top of the oatmeal box with a small space between them. Then tape them in place. Balance the bag of ice and salt on top of the pencils. Wait 15 minutes. Then read the temperature on the thermometer again. Conclusion Cold air is more dense than warm air, which makes it heavier. In this experiment, the ice chills the air around the bag. Then the cold air sinks to the bottom of the oatmeal box. That is why the temperature is lower when you check the thermometer the second time. Did you all enjoy learning super simple experiments? Yes, yes Maya. Maya. Maya, Vayu, we are very thankful to you for teaching us these experiments. As we carry them in our day-to-day -day life, but we're not aware of them. Don't worry kids, we are here to help you. Any one of you has any more queries? No Maya, no Maya. Bye Maya, bye Maya, bye. 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 So, kids enjoy your party and hope to meet you soon. Bye. In. Have you ever wondered how a forecaster knows when the weather is going to change? Follow this direction to make a barometer and do some forecasting of your own. Requirements Scissors, balloon, large glass jar, large rubber band, plastic straw, glue, 3 by 5 inch card, marker, Tape. Procedure Cut a piece from the balloon that is large enough to stretch over the top of the jar. Secure it in place with the rubber band. Put a drop of glue in the center of the stretched balloon. Set one end of the straw on top of the glue so that it is lined horizontally. Place the jar on a flat surface near a wall. Holding the card lengthwise, write low at the bottom and high at the top of it. Tape the card onto the wall next to the jar. Check the weather report including air pressure for your area every day for two weeks. Check your barometer each day. Monitor the barometer closely before, during and after any storms. Record your results. Conclusion. When air pressure is high, the air will push down on the balloon in your barometer, causing the straw to point to high. When air pressure is low, the straw will point to low. High air pressure generally indicates clear weather ahead. 
while low air pressure indicates cloudy weather. Changes in air pressure usually mean the weather will be changing. A barometer is very helpful when making predictions about the weather. In Kids, do you know Sir Isaac Newton? No. He was a great scientist who introduced the three laws of motion. 300 years ago, Sir Isaac Newton figured out how and why things move. Let's study the first law of motion. Kids, I will demonstrate this experiment. Requirements 3 by 5 inch index card Small drinking glass Nickel Procedure Place the index card over the top of the glass. Place the nickel in the middle of the card so that it is centered over the top of the glass. Then flick your index finger against the edge of the card. The card will move forward and the coin will drop into the glass. Conclusion This is a demonstration of Newton's first law of motion regarding inertia. The card and coin are at rest and stay that way until acted on by a force. Your finger provides the force to move the card, but it does not act on coin, so the coin stays behind. It falls into the glass because the card is no longer there to support it. In Newton's third law of motion states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Requirements 11 feet of plastic fishing line, plastic drinking straw, oblong shaped balloon, paper clip and tape. Procedure Slip one end of the fishing line through the drinking straw. Find a place where you can stretch the fishing line at least 10 feet and tie each end to something secure. Attach both ends of the line making sure that the line is stout. Blow up the balloon and secure the end with the paper clip. Tape the balloon rocket to the straw as shown. Position the balloon at the beginning of the line. Remove the paper clip to release the rocket. Conclusion Newton's third law of motion states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. When you remove the paper clip, the air escapes from the balloon in one direction. This action produces a reaction. The balloon moves forward in the opposite direction. In Kids, have you seen things floating on water? Yes, yes. But No Lighter things float and heavier sink in water. Requirements 3 pieces of lightweight string Pencil 2 large metal nuts Desk lamp or other object to hang string from 2 small drinking glasses and water. Procedure Tie one end of the first piece of string to one end of the pencil. Tie one end of the second piece of string to the other end of the pencil. Tie one metal nut to the dangling end of each piece of string. Tie one end of the third piece of string around the middle of the pencil. Tie the other end to a desk lamp or other subject so that the pencil hangs over a flat surface. The nuts should be suspended about an inch above the surface. Arrange the glasses on the surface so that one nut hangs inside each glass. You can adjust the pencil to make the nuts 
even with each other. Fill one glass with water. The pencil will tilt. Conclusion In the air, the metal nuts are level because they weigh the same. In other words, the downward force of gravity is actually equal on each nut. When you add water to one glass, the nut inside is acted on by an upward force called buoyancy, which in effect makes the nut lighter. The pencil tilts down on the side that has more weight. In. Sometimes it's hard to tell whether or not an egg is hard boiled. Bobby, can you tell which one is hard boiled? We can find it out using inertia. Let's see how. Requirements Hard boiled egg, raw egg. Procedure Place both eggs on a hard flat surface. Spin the hard boiled egg with your hand. Place your finger on it for just a second to stop it from spinning. Now spin the raw egg. Place your finger on it for just a second to stop it from spinning. Do you notice any difference between the two eggs? Conclusion In this experiment, the force of your finger on the hard-boiled egg is enough to stop it from spinning. The hard-boiled egg is solid, so the force acts on the egg as a whole. Although you exert roughly the same amount of force on the raw egg, it still spins slightly after you touch it. That is because the force acts on the hard shell, but not directly on the liquid inside the raw egg. The liquid continues to move slowly for another minute or two due to inertia. In Every magnet has an invisible field around it. It is called a magnetic field. Let us perform an experiment to see what the magnetic field looks like. Requirements Old scissors Little steel wool pad Two bar magnets with north and south poles marked Sheet of plain paper Procedure Carefully cut the steel wool into tiny pieces. Place one magnet on a table and hold the paper about half inch above it. With your free hand, sprinkle the steel wool bits on top of the paper. Shake the paper a little, then hold it still. A paper will start to form. Move the paper away from the magnet and shake it again. Does the pattern disappear? Now place the two magnets side by side with an inch of space between them. Set up the magnets as opposites of each other, so that there is north and south pole at each end. Hold the paper with the steel wool pieces over the magnets. How does the pattern look this time? Turn one magnet around so that both north poles are at the same end. Then hold the paper over both magnets again. Conclusion The steel wool bits on the paper are attracted to the line of force or the magnetic field around the magnet. The pattern you see is the shape of the magnetic field. When you change the position of the magnets, the pattern of the magnetic field changes too. In. Let's study some more properties of magnet. Requirements Wooden ruler Plastic bottle cap, paper clips, coins, aluminium cookie sheet, 
nails, magnet, sheet of paper, handkerchief, drinking glass. Procedure Spread out the roller, bottle cap, paper clips, coins, cookie sheet, nails. Try to pick up each of the materials with the magnet one at a time. Make a pile of the things that are attracted to the magnet. Now try to block the magnetic attraction. Put a sheet of paper between the magnet and an object. Does it block the magnetic effect? Next, see if the handkerchief can block the attraction. Can the drinking glass interfere with the magnetic attraction? Conclusion A magnetic field is the area around a magnet in which the magnetic force can be felt. Magnets attract objects made of iron or steel. That is why the magnet was attracted to the nails and paper clips. The magnetic field is strong enough to penetrate some materials, but not others. As you can see, the magnet works through paper and cloth, but with glass, its effect weakens. In. Magnetic attraction can create some remarkable attraction. Look at this one. It will amaze you. Requirements Drinking glass Long bar magnet Piece of thread Paper clip Tape Procedure Set the glass upside down on a table. Place the bar magnet across the top of it so that it extends at least an inch over the edge of the glass. 2. Tie one end of the thread to the paper clip. Touch the other end of the paper clip lightly to the bottom of the magnet so that the paper clip hangs from it. Pull down on the thread very gently so that the paper clip is still attracted to the magnet but there is space between them. It may take a few attempts to get this right. Without changing the position of the paper clip, tape the thread to table. The paper clip will appear to defy gravity. Conclusion The magnetic force acts on the paper clip to pull it up. You exert another force on the paper clip by pulling the string down. When the two forces are equal, the paper clip appears to float in the air. In. Some objects are naturally magnetic, but magnets can be created too. Requirements Steel sewing needle, bar magnet, clean plastic margarine container, water, dishwashing liquid, thin slice of cork, and a tape. Procedure Rub the needle across the bar magnet at least 30 times in one direction. Fill the container with water and place a drop of dishwashing liquid in the center. Put the cork on top of the dishwashing liquid. Then place the needle in the middle of cork. When the cork stops, the ends of the needle will point north and south. Spin the cork gently with your finger. When the cork stops, the ends of the needle will point north and south. Conclusion Non-magnetic iron or steel is made up of tiny units that have their own north and south poles. The units are jumbled up, so the poles face in different directions. If something causes the units to line up with all the poles facing in the same direction, the iron or steel becomes magnetized. When you rub the needle with the bar magnet, in this experiment, you line up all the poles in the steel. The needle becomes magnetized and points north.
So kids, are you having fun? Yes. In. This next experiment is positively electrified. It is related to static electricity. You will learn how to create static electricity by manipulating a property called charge. Requirements: two balloons, two pieces of string, each one foot long, wool sweater, a scarf. Procedure. Blow up both the balloons and tie off each end with a knot. Attach one piece of string to each balloon. Hold the balloon by the strings and touch them together. What happened? Now rub the balloons on the sweater or scarf. Hold the balloons by the string and touch them together again. What happens this time? Conclusion Atoms are made up of very tiny particles. Some of these particles, protons and electrons, have a property called charge. Protons have a positive charge and electrons have a negative charge. Charges that are the same push each other away and charges that are different attract each other. All atoms have equal numbers of particles, so the charges cancel each other out. When you first touch the balloons together, their atoms have equal numbers of protons and electrons, so they cancel each other out. The balloons are neutral to each other. By rubbing the balloons on the sweater or scarf, you knock electrons off the atoms in the wood. The electrons stick to the atoms in the balloons, causing them to become negatively charged. Since both balloons are negatively charged, they ripple or push each other away. In. Let's perform an experiment to see static electricity at work. Requirements Large plastic bag Lightweight tin baking sheet Small metal object such as a key Wood table, baseball sized piece of clay. Procedure Place the plastic bag, baking sheet, and metal object on a wood table top. Press the clay into the center of the sheet so that it sticks to it. Grasp the clay and rub the bottom of the sheet back and forth on top of the plastic bag for a minute or two. Do not touch any part of the sheet while you are doing this. Turn off all the lights in the room to make it easier to see the spark. Using the clay as a handle, pick up the sheet and hold it near the metal object on the table. A small spark should jump from the sheet to the metal object. Conclusion Static electricity is a buildup of charge on the surface of an object. By rubbing the plastic bag, you cause static electricity to build up on the baking sheet. The wooden table and the clay do not attract static electricity, but the key does. Because the key and the tray have unlike charges, the static electricity on the tray jumps to the key. You see this transfer as a spark. In. Kids, have you ever held a cup of hot cocoa on a cold day and felt your hands getting warmer? Yes! That feeling is a result of heat conduction. Requirements Butter, which is slightly softened, 3 spoons, roughly the same size. Out of that, one is metal, one is wood and one plastic. 3 small beads, a cup, filled with hot water. Procedure Place a pea-sized dab of butter at the end of each spoon handle. Push a bead into each dab of butter. Place the spoons into the cup of hot water with the handles pointing up. Make sure that the handles do not touch each other. 
which beat falls first conclusion when something is heated its molecules begin to move faster moving molecule bump into each other molecules making them move too this process called conduction is one way heat energy spreads some materials are better conductors than others for instance metal is a good conductor when you do this experiment the heat from the water tends to move more quickly up the metal spoon warming the butter and causing that bead to fall first In. Kids, I want to ask you a very interesting question. Can I help you to keep warm? Requirements: two pieces of aluminium foil, two outdoor thermometers, paper towels, water, two saucers, freezer. Procedure. Fold the aluminium foil to make two loose pockets. Leave an opening at one end of each pocket so the thermometers can slip in and out. Put a thermometer in each pocket. Soak one of the paper towels in water, then wrap it around one foil pocket. Wrap a dry paper towel around the outside of the other pocket. Lay one pocket on each saucer. Place both in the freezer. Check the temperature of each thermometer every 5 minutes for 20 minutes. Does one stay warmer? Conclusion As water begins to freeze, it gives off energy in the form of heat. When the wet paper towel begins to freeze, it warms the air around the thermometer just a little so the temperature is slightly higher than that on the other thermometer once the water on the paper towel has frozen the air begins to cool again in do you ride bicycles yes Can anyone tell me how do the brakes on the bicycles work? Requirements: two dry blocks of wood, approximately one by two by three inches, dry bar of soap. Procedure: hold one block of wood in each hand. Rub the blocks together for about a minute. Stop rubbing. and feel the surfaces that you rub together press the dry bar of soap on each block you may have to press hard to coat the surfaces with soap rub the blocks together again does it feel different this time conclusion most surfaces are slightly rough and will not slide past another surface easily friction is the term for this resistance It takes energy to overcome friction and make materials slide past each other. A lot of that energy is converted to heat. You can feel that heat after you rub the blocks of dry wood together. When you add soap, the surfaces do not get as warm. Soap is a lubricant which makes the surface slippery and allows the object to slide past each other more easily. In. You may not be able to see air around you, but like all other matter, it takes space and has weight. Let's prove it. Requirements: three pieces of string, each twelve inches long, ruler, wire hanger, two large balloons, sharp pin or needle. Procedure. Tie one end of a piece of string to the center of the ruler at the six-inch mark. 
tie the other end to a hanger so the ruler hangs horizontally below it. Find a place to put the hanger, such as on the clothing rod inside a closet. Blow up both balloons to the same size. Attach the remaining strings to the balloons as shown. Tie one balloon to the ruler at the 1 inch mark and tie the other at the 11 inch mark. Adjust the strings to make the ruler level and the balloons balanced. Burst one balloon with the pin or needle. Conclusion Matter is any physical thing that takes up space and has weight. The air around us is made up of matter. When you blow up the balloons, you show that air takes up space. You also show that air has weight with this experiment. When you hang the two air-filled balloons from the ruler, it's balanced because they weigh the same. When you burst one balloon, the air escapes. The popped balloon does not weigh as much as the unpopped balloon. The weight of the air in the unpopped balloon pulls that side of the ruler down. Did you all enjoy learning super simple experiments? Yes, yes Maya. Maya. Maya, Vayu, we are very thankful to you for teaching us these experiments as we carry them in our day-to-day -day life but were not aware of them. Don't worry kids, we are here to help you. Any one of you has any more queries? No, Maya. No, Who are you? you? Bye, Maya. Bye, 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 bye. bye. So, kids enjoy your party and hope to meet you soon. Bye. Live a boy named Daichi Umogato. He was a smart merchant 